Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. I'm Margaret Meehan. I'm a research assistant at the Tax Lab at McGill University, where I'm also a master's student. I'll be presenting a paper titled Causality, Mining, and Fiction, which is co-authored by Professor Andrew Piper and my peer, Dane Malenfant. So the problem that we're interested in addressing is how to computationally detect causal relations in literary data. Causal associations have long been understood to be a fundamental dimension of narrative, and research has shown that reading comprehension is really driven by asking why questions. Um, successful narrative persuasion is also linked to causal statements. So if we can uncover causal pairs in text, then we can ask some really interesting questions. If we can detect the presence of causal relatedness, then we could ask how is causality explicit or implicit across genres, textual communities, narrative domains? And if we can determine causal event pairs, then we can computationally uncover why an event happened given earlier events in the literary text. So what are the challenges in detecting causality in narrative? Um, much NLP research has been done on causal relationships, for instance, in clinical diagnosis or social science policy effects. Um, a recent survey by Ali et al. highlights the many challenges of this inter interdisciplinary research and the introduction of deep learning techniques. But one area that remains understudied is the behavior of existing models across different text domains. As the work of David Bamham, uh, from Berkeley has shown the performance of many NLP systems degrade considerably when applied to fictional texts. So in some cases by 20 points or more. Um, this paper is focused on benchmarking the performance of causal modeling in fictional texts. To do so, we introduce a pilot data set of manually annotated causally related events in sentences drawn from popular contemporary fiction. With this data set, we then develop computational models to detect causal relations. We also develop models trained on, non, on a non-literary data set drawn from SEMIVAL, uh, which is commonly used in NLP research model creation. And before I get into the modeling, I wanna share our approach to causality in narrative. So causality is first and foremost a way of understanding event relationships. Two or more events can be said to be causally related when a temporally prior action or state causes a subsequent action or state. For Vandenbroek, one of the pioneers of causality research, causality consists of four interlocking criteria. So temporal priority, the causal event must be tempor temporally prior to the caused event. Operativity, the causal event must be active when the caused event occurs. Uh, necessity, the caused event would not have occurred without the causal event, and sufficiency. If given the circumstances of the story, the causal event occurs, then the caused event also occurs. So to create our data set, we first drew from a data set curated by McGill's text lab of 1,200 literary works published in English in the past 15 years, um, comprised of seven genres. We randomly selected three consecutive sentences as our passages. Um, so here's an example of a three sentence passage. And this is from the novel, One Crazy Summer. In order to annotate causal event pairs over the course of several weeks, we trained a team of three undergraduate annotators, all with majors in the humanities. In addition to being provided Vandenbroek's schema, annotators were instructed to maximally annotate an event so that all consecutive words associated with an event were captured. We define an event for our purposes as any action undertaken by an agent that actually occurs in the diegetic universe of the narrative. Negative events, things that don't happen, can be both the causal or caused event in our framework, but hypothetical events could not, i.e. like I would go to the market, but is a hypothetical event. We also condition our event pairs on three sentence excerpts. So we only observe event pairs that are within a maximum of two sentences apart. So annotators were also asked to provide a strength score in accordance with Vandenbroek's theory that causality is not a purely binary phenomenon, but one of a degree. For example, some events may be more or less necessary for a caused event to occur while temporal priority and operativity are considered to be binary. So to account for this, we created a three-point ordinal scale 
to capture annotator confidence in the sufficiency and necessity of the causal event of the causal pairing. This figure provides a distribution of the scores. And as we can see in over half the cases, causal events were identified as being strongly causal. Uh, so this suggests that the use of the ordinal scale might be extraneous um, and is worth further study. We also calculated annotator agreement and found that Fleiss's kappa uh, was similar to other annotation frameworks introduced for causality um, in other papers. So just an example of a student's annotation uh, without narrative context, it's not clear whether the causal event is metaphor metaphorical, which complicates the necessity of the schema, uh, Vandenbroek's schema. So this might be why it has a slightly lower strength score um, rather than st strongly um, necessary. And I use this example just to highlight some of the challenges in annotating without literary context. In order to benchmark the performance of our NLP models applied to the literary data set, we also train models on a semi-val data set commonly used by NLP researchers. The semi-val 2010 task eight data set has about a thousand causal effect relations. The sentences are collected online and they only allow a specific set of syntactic patterns. Um, these sentences are non-literary. Here's an example. Okay, so with these two data sets, one literary and one non-literary, we had two distinguishable sub-problems. One, we call the detection of causal relatedness in a sentence, referred to simply as causal sentence detection. Rather than identify two causal related events, this problem identifies the presence of causality within a sentence. So we would expect this to learn patterns that indicate causality. A very simple example would be the presence of the word because. This causal mining allows researchers to identify text, text types, or textual communities where causal argumentation exists in more explicit and detectable ways. For example, we assume that children's literature makes causal relatedness more readily apparent to readers through the explicit use of causally related language. As texts rise in complexity, we assume such causal language will decline, allowing readers more interpretive freedom as to the causes of narrative progression. So the second task is identifying causal pairs, which might be the more traditional NLP task. This task is important because it can help researchers identify the particular causal relations between agents and events in any narrative environment. For example, we assume that different communities might attribute the causes of COVID to different agents and the accurate definition, uh, the accurate identification of causal pairs could help surface these different community-based narrative understandings of an event like COVID. So for the first modeling problem, I'll talk about that. Um, and to detect the presence of causality within a sentence, we looked at the current state of research on causal relationships within computational linguistics. And many researchers find their best performance on non-literary data sets by using BERT because we aim to uncover how these types of deep learning models perform on fictive literary data. We also utilize BERT, which is a multi-layered bi-directional transformer-based encoder, and then fine-tuned an additional layer to model our task. Our BERT architecture and hyperparameters are based on findings from the initial Devlin BERT paper in 2019, and incorporates the methodology from the base CBERT model developed from Vivek et al., uh, which is part particularly for causal event relationships. So we implemented our model with the transformer and PyTorch uh, Python libraries. And the model was fed literary sentences as sequences of tokens with a binary indicator of the presence of causality representing non-zero strength score. The output context vectors were then passed through our softmax activation layer. And the model uses backpropagation with Adam and you can see the rest of the parameters in this table. Uh, so this, this procedure um, was also repeated with the semi val data, and then we compared the results. Uh, before training the model, we also did explore GeoJu's patterns on this literary data, which are um, lexicosyntactic patterns for, the, for causal relationships, um, but we did not generate meaningful results. 
So the second subproblem is detecting causal pairs. And um, for this problem, we built a feature set of syntactic, semantic, and dependency-driven representations of the causal phrases in each data set. So we utilize all phrasal pairs from both intersentence and intersentence causal events, um, not just pairs that are within the same sentence like the previous problem. Uh, and we pre-process the semi-val data to pull the phrase around the causal and cause words. So we, to construct our feature space, we aggregate our features into kind of these three general categories, semantic. So to capture similar, similarity and meaning between two phrases, we calculate the ratio of similar words using a word to vec model, um, syntactic to capture the syntactic similarity of the two phrases, or the syntactic structure of the two phrases. We maintained account for each part of speech present in the causal and cause phrases. We also engineer a co-reference count um, and overlapping entity counts. And then finally, we have dependency relationships for the sentence level um, relationships. And we then experimented widely with uh, algorithms with widely used algorithms like random forest, SVMs, and logistic regression uh, to train the model in the feature set and interpret the feature weights of the best model. And the main goal of this exercise is really to understand what features are important for detecting causally related pairs. We don't expect to get a really robust algorithm from um, these models. So for causal mining at the sentence level, the first subproblem, the literary data set scores only slightly lower than the semi-val data set, um, only five, about around five points lower. So we achieve the best results when we filter out data that has low causal strength score as provided by the annotators. We expected a drop in performance because previous entity recognition with ML models on literary data achieved only a 70% F1 score. And we found no meaningful results when applying traditional methods like GeoJuice patterns. So while the size of the data set might have led BERT to overfit, we found consistency across trainings with randomly selected batches of the training set. So this does indicate that BERT is successful in capturing the complexity of causality within the literary data. Uh, for causal pair detection using the random forest models, the literary data uh, model actually scored slightly higher. And this makes sense because the events were marked by student annotators rather than computationally um, capturing the bounds of the events around the words that were annotated in the semi-val data set. Uh, so regardless, we are less concerned with the performance of this model and are more interested in interpreting the feature weights. So in the literary data set and the semi-val data set, we find that the number of semantically similar words is the greatest indicator of causality. Um, so, you know, I went to the dentist in my two thirds. And so that makes some sense. Um, this follows our intuition that if an event causes an effect, there will be a semantically similar indicator um, words across those phrases. And as mentioned, applying Juju's pattern matching did not work for the literary data set, but we found that the presence of certain parts of speech, especially verbs within both the cause and the causal phrase, helped to indicate causality. Um, certain features that we expected to hold higher weight, like co-reference count, did not, although this might be a bias in the chosen data set. So how would we increase model performance? This is limited by the relative lack of training data and the complexity of annotating causality. Uh, so in our literary data set, we find examples where multiple events cause a subsequent event or examples in which Necessity of the relationship could be disputed, like the example I gave um, with the woman's feet on the ground. We also only test on limited sentence win windows, ignoring causal relatedness across large text spans, which is argu arguably an important issue for long literary na narrative um, data. So in future research, we would really like to apply a tighter annotation framework to labeling of events following the scheme of Mosta Fasada, uh, which focuses on single word phrases that may be hierarchically nested. And this would allow for more semantic, systematic comparison across multiple domains. Okay. So finally, um, despite the inherent challenges in tagging the data, our study finds that it is possible to detect the presence of causal relations in literary sentences utilizing pre-trained bird layers with similar success to the semi-val data. 
We achieved less of a drop in the F1 score than su suggested by prior work with other semantic features. We also show that in detecting the causal phrase, consistent feature rates are used across the two data sets. This indicates that we should be able to use pre-existing architectures developed by the NLP community to detect causal relationships between phrases and literary data. In further research, we aim to apply these deep learning techniques, deep learning architectures for the detection of causal pairs in literary data for both intersentence and intersentence phrase pairs. This will allow us to perform causal network analysis in a text. Um, so even with a small set of hand annotated training data, we're able to compare our model to state of art results from the field. We're excited that researchers can utilize these model architectures developed in the NLP field to study causality in literary texts, how causal relations are encoded differently across different text types, texts or textual communities remains an open question, but one that might be approachable given our findings. Thank you very much.